when you have physical freedom, you have prosperity. I found that sentence really fascinating when watching this uh, debate between Matt Berkowitz of the Zeitgeist Movement and Viktor Pross, who represented um, free market, anarchism, capitalism, whatever. And this sentence, when you have physical freedom, you have prosperity, was uttered by Viktor at some point. And, well, it was basically his culmination of, of, well, at least his opening statement and in the end uh, I think of everything he was trying to say was as long as people have physical freedom, as long as the non-aggression principle is upheld and is respected in every way, um, there is prosperity, like automatically. And it just, I don't know, it just blows my mind how a person can can even say a sentence like that with a straight face. Like, well, I'm gonna start at the beginning here. So this is supposed to be my little review of that said debate. And, well, the whole thing um, started out with Matt uh, giving a nice introduction of how a resource-based economy actually would be the social system that serves humankind best, best serves humankind, as is the title or as was the title of the entire debate, which was which social system best serves humankind. So we started off with uh, Matt's introductory statements um, in which, like I said, he gave an overview of how a resource-based economy would be the best model, the best system to, um, to have an economy, an economic system that actually does just that, serve humankind in the best physically possible way. And um, after that, Victor took the stage, if you will, and his opening statement um, didn't really say anything about the actual topic of the debate. So I, I, I really I listened to the whole, to his opening statement at least two and a half times, really trying to hear, okay, where does he describe how and why and in which way uh, um, free market, anarchism, capitalism actually is the social system or is supposed to be the social system that best serves humankind, but um, what he really did was he talked at length about what is freedom, what constitutes freedom, what is the non-aggression principle, um, which he relates directly to his proposed economic system of a free market, which is already a fallacy in itself, which I'll get to a little bit later. Um, and yeah, of course he he also talked about uh, how socialism and similar systems in the past failed and how that is somehow supposed to be um, proof or evidence for uh, why a resource-based economy would also fail, which is also a complete fallacy in itself already, because as we all know, I think by this point, which he even acknowledged himself, but then he did it again. Um, in any way, uh, we all know that a resource-based economy is in no way socialism or communism or any of that stuff. It simply isn't, and Victor himself said, uh, yeah, he's aware of the fact that it isn't, but anyway, I'm just gonna talk about socialism for a while now and point out how those attempts in the past didn't work just to say something that could somehow be construed as something ne negative about a resource-based economy in the minds of people who aren't maybe such critical listeners or something. Um, yeah, probably worth a try, probably worked with some people anyway. Well, um, and yeah, he talked uh, at great length about how the state is a bad thing. Um, which I don't disagree with. Uh, but again, here 
this uh, association fallacy, as Matt also pointed out like three to five times, I don't remember exactly, uh, to Victor, that he is doing this thing all the time, doing this association fallacy, where he talks about one thing, like socialism or statism, and then somehow he, he's trying to make this, talking about this thing, about socialism or statism, make it seem as if now he's saying why a resource-based economy would be bad. But he knows, I mean, he, I think at least he knows, um, I can only hope for him that he knows after talking for years to resource-based economy advocates that there is no state in a resource-based economy and that a resource-based economy isn't socialism. So. He tries it again and again and publicly in this debate that is now on YouTube, he does it again. He does this association fallacy where he describes to the viewer and the listener that socialism failed and state is, is uh, aggression and violence inherently. And But that is not the topic. The topic is RBE or market economy. But just by talking and talking and talking about how the state is bad and how socialism didn't work, somehow that is his way of just creating, I don't know, this negative energy or negative feeling in the, in the minds of the listeners about a resource-based economy. Because he's creating this false dichotomy of, here's what I'm proposing, which is the free market economy, and then I talk about something else that is bad, and now I sold to the listener that free market is good and the other thing is bad. And since this whole debate is about free market versus resource-based economy, I somehow managed to um, do this little inception of this idea that resource-based economy is bad. Because resource-based economy stands on the opposite side of free market economy. And the bad things I talked about also stand on the opposite side of free market economy. So, ta-da, magic, somehow. I managed to create this impression in the minds of the listeners that a resource-based economy is bad. Well, it doesn't work with most people, luckily. I think, uh, fortunately, most listeners are actually more intelligent than Victor Pross himself and can figure out his little games or the, the games he's trying to play on their minds. In any way, that's uh, what he did in his opening statement. He said nothing about why his, his proposed free market economy is actually supposed to be the social system that best serves humankind. He just said that it's a, it's a system that respects and upholds the non-aggression principle, which a resource-based economy 100% also does. But he doesn't mention that little fact. He just says, well, our system is non-violent and our system is non-aggressive and our system is completely voluntary. Uh, somehow uh, creating again this, these little psychological tricks that he's trying to play, creating again the impression that the other system must not be those things, cannot be those things. That the other system obviously must be non-voluntary, must be aggressive must be coercive in some way because I'm saying, or he's saying, uh, my system is non-aggressive and non-coercive and completely voluntary and that's why my system is better as if the other th system wouldn't be those things, wouldn't be voluntary. <laughs> I mean it's also so transparent and so obvious, <coughs> pardon, um, yeah, and I can only hope that it's really obvious and transparent to everyone who watches that. Otherwise it would be sad and kind of infuriating if he succeeded with his little psycho tricks. Um, yeah, so that's basically what he did in his opening statement. Then there was a rebuttal by uh, Matt, which uh, even addressed some of the points that I mentioned now and explained more about how a resource-based economy actually does uh, economize much better than a market economy does, uh, looking simply at the end product, which is, again, 
uh, the, which was the topic of the discussion, which social system serves humankind in the best possible way. And Matt again described how there are things that a market economy fails to do because uh, no matter how equal the opportunities may be for everyone, which they actually aren't in any case, but even if the opportunities were equal for everyone, uh, the outcome simply in a market economy is that it doesn't serve humanity best. It creates inequality, it creates inefficiency, uh, as a result of the inefficiency, it creates all this cyclical consumption and pollution and resource waste and all the things we know. These inherent market mechanisms that we all know about by now and how a resource-based economy doesn't do that and how the end result simply is a more healthier humanity, a more healthier, uh, I'm sorry, a healthier humanity, a healthier uh, environment and just a healthier world all in all whatever you look at uh, the, the the ecological systems humans animals whatever you want to look at it, it just does the best thing that's possible and uh, with a market economy other things are the priority and there are other me mechanisms at play that just just don't allow us to uh, create peak efficiency and pre peak health for this entire uh, eco and economic system. And then Victor comes back in his rebuttal and what does he do? He talks about how Peter Joseph uh, made some statement about um, how it's how the state is the only thing that somehow keeps the market economy uh, somehow in in its in 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 limits uh, and without the state uh, things would be even worse and the market economy would create even worse social stratification and even worse um, environmental destruction and resource waste and pollution and all of that and victor somehow completely manages to misconstrue that as i don't know peter joseph being for the state uh, and <laughs> being a, a state advocate or something, which fortunately Matt um, pointed out soon after after Victor's uh, rebuttal there, that well, uh, it, it was it was completely complete nonsense again what Victor did there in in trying to. I don't know, trying to make Peter Joseph in some sort of into some sort of statist who advocates the state and I mean even the even the basic fallacy of talking about Peter Joseph. What does what does that have to do anything? And one statement that Peter Joseph made at one time, is that really the topic of the discussion there? Uh, I thought it was about which social system best serves humanity, humankind and not about what Peter Joseph said at some point about uh, yeah, about something that Victor also completely misunderstood. Um, yeah, all in all, on the whole, I don't know what to say. Victor just didn't say anything and that's where I, where I get back to the, the statement I opened this video with, which was that when you have physical freedom, you have prosperity. I mean, that is that is his his conclusion somehow that when uh, a social or an economic system gives people physical freedom, then it it automatically creates prosperity somehow, and even even granting that that were true which it obviously isn't, but even granting that it were true, then the same thing would be true for a resource-based economy, because a resource-based economy gives people physical freedom, at least as much as a market economy. Uh, so again, just trying to create these false dichotomies and these association fallacies, um, making, just, just making statements about the the 
social and economic system that Victor proposes and advocates as if the other system that Matt and all RBE advocates propose were different in that regard. So just say my system doesn't create physical uh, aggression and in my system people are physically free. Um, I mean he doesn't end the sentence actually and say I unlike in a resource-based economy because he know that that would not be true and he'd, he'd then be a liar actually but kind of in his sort of little tiny Victor Pross cleverness he leaves uh, leaves out the rest of the sentence and just says in my free market anarchism capitalism there is physical freedom and that is why it's better than a resource-based economy <laughs> it would be saying it would be like saying this leaf of grass is green that's why it's better than the leaf of grass right next to it which is also green but I don't say that so it just seems to a listener who might not be paying that much attention that oh okay then the first leaf of grass must be better because it's green I see wow what a great point I made well Victor what am I gonna do with you nothing obviously but it's it's just sad you know I've I've talked to you on Facebook for months about these things and there were moments in, in this debate where you, Victor, actually were like, oh, surprised. You, I mean, you didn't say anything, but you made this oh, surprised face when Matt told you that a resource-based economy is voluntary, is 100% voluntary. I don't know how many times I have explained this to you. It must have been at least 10 or 20 times in our Facebook discussions but now you act like all surprised about oh wow really uh, it's voluntary I didn't know that um, that's news to me well <laughs> oh man yeah it is voluntary I've even made this little Facebook picture that says uh, what part of a resource-based economy is 100% voluntary, don't you understand? Um, which I think I've posted in response to some of your comments at least five times. But never mind, uh, things just are difficult to remember. So, um, to try to come to an end here, the whole debate I mean, while it, it wasn't as bad as I had somehow expected it to be because it didn't really go into too much detail, which is where the, the real uh, horrible stuff just comes up, comes up about this uh, idea of, of free market capitalism. And you, you guys just stayed, well, more on the surface of things and really, yeah, Victor just didn't didn't say anything I, there's no other way to to say it really uh, he yeah he described us to us the the non-aggression principle and what freedom means to him um, but that doesn't say why or how exactly a free market economy is supposed to be the social system that serves humanity best it just doesn't and it just reminds me of this this other fallacy that not only Victor but everyone so far that I've I've talked to about a free market economy uh, makes or does, which is uh, yeah. Victor also said it very specifically, uh, if I remember correctly. He said that the free market is the application of the non-aggression principle the application as if it's the own if it were the only one <laughs> as if uh, there can be no economic system no social system following from the non-aggression principle than a free market economy which is just simply absolutely 
untrue, incorrect. It's not like that. Because a resource-based economy, just as one other example, can also follow from the non-aggression principle. It's also the application of physical freedom and the NAP. It is a 100%. It is based on educated people that voluntarily decide to live together and to economize in a resource-based economy way. There is nothing involuntary about it. There is nothing aggressive about it. So uh, always this, it's, it's just mostly like rhetorical tricks with them. Just, just saying this, this one sentence that free market economy is the application of the non-aggression principle or of physical freedom. I don't remember exactly which way he said it, but just saying, well, here we have this, uh, this highest rule, which I agree with, um, which is uh, freedom, physical freedom, non-aggression, uh, voluntarism, whatever you want to call it, all these things uh, are of highest importance. There, there can be no uh, breaking of some eggs, as Victor um, said it, to, to, to reach our goal, to make this omelette that we're trying to make. We cannot break the non-aggression principle. We cannot force, coerce people into a resource-based economy. That must not happen and it's not what anyone is suggesting a resource-based economy and i we we rbe advocates have been saying that over and over and over and i will say it one more time here the idea is to come to a point where people voluntarily because they understood these things and they have gained a certain awareness about how a global economy works and what mechanisms are good and work and which ones are bad because they don't work. When people come to that understanding at some point, not through sitting them down in, uh, in some contraption that beams this awareness into their head against their will, no, just through the way that I and millions of other people have come to this awareness by reading, by watching YouTube videos, by talking to other people voluntarily, out of their own free will, if you will. Not gonna get into a free will discussion right now, but definitely not through coercion, definitely not through any involuntary mechanisms, but through voluntary learning, um, voluntary education, so when they come to that point, when they understand these things and when they want a resource-based economy, then they can voluntarily have a resource-based economy. And this is 100% within what the non-aggression principle and what voluntarism allow us to do. It is voluntarism. It is freedom. It is physical freedom. It is everything that Victor Pross and all his free market advocate uh, colleagues stand for and uh, there is no, violent, no violation of their principles in a resource-based economy. So again, an RBE is also the application of the non-aggression principle. An RBE is also the application of physical freedom because the, the non-aggression principle and voluntarism allow for people to do what an RBE is. They allow for people to voluntarily cooperate and to voluntarily share resources when they want to and to own things when they want to. So, Nothing about an RBE actually says that there cannot be private property. That's complete bullshit. If I want to own something, I can own it. Uh, an RBE just only will be an RBE when people voluntarily have realized that owning everything doesn't work for everyone. As well as 
sharing things works for everyone. Because when everyone wants to own a car, then, well, we see today what happens. When everyone voluntarily understands and decides to share cars, well, the cities would be much emptier of cars for one. Uh, the, the amount of resources that would be, would be saved and preserved by not building, just saying a number, not building 5 billion cars, but only 50 million cars, because, well, it's enough, as an example, or, I don't know, maybe it's 500 million, uh, just saying numbers here to represent that sort of train of thought. Um, so if we just have to build a hundredth of uh, what we need to build if everyone wants to own one, then obviously that's better because we save resources and if it works for everyone and if everyone wants it voluntarily then it's fully within what uh, what free market advocates hold as their highest principle voluntarism, physical uh, freedom and the non-aggression principle so um, addressing you guys, the free market advocates now Please get this in your head for uh, for once and forever, if possible. When you do these things where you say, our system, free market uh, economy, um, is voluntary and is, uh, is without physical uh, aggression and is physical freedom and is the application of physical freedom, you're, you're performing a fallacy because it is not the application, it is one possible application and please get it in your heads and accept and learn that a resource-based economy also is a application of your highest principles. No one in a resource-based economy is supposed to be coerced or forced into anything they don't want. It's the other way around uh, in a way that uh, a resource-based economy can and will only happen when people want it, voluntarily. Every little thing about it. And, I mean, this, this even goes into this uh, topic of central planning that you, you also keep bringing up, you guys. Um, look, I mean, if, if central planning were, in some respects, the thing that worked best for an economy, and people wanted it voluntarily, it would still be within your highest principle. But a resource-based economy, as I have explained in, in at least two other videos, isn't about central planning in any case, but even if it were and if people decided, all of them together, to voluntarily have a centrally planned economy, then it would also be within voluntarism. So you would even have to allow for that, even if you think it wouldn't work. And like I said, an RBE isn't a centrally planned economy anyway, but please do accept the fact that if people wanted something like that voluntarily out of their own will, then it would be within your highest principles. Um, regarding that little topic um, well I don't know if I should get into this right now yeah let's quickly uh, I will I was I was having these thoughts a few days ago uh, just giving giving a quick overview of what I was thinking uh, look at it like that if you were a rich person who could afford to hire someone who does their household like someone who goes shopping for you, someone who checks out your fridge uh, like five times every day, looks what's still in there, what needs to be bought, goes and buys it, who, uh, who buys whatever you need for you, of course, uh, with your money, but you, you just employ or hire this person to manage your little uh, economy, your home economy for you. That would be a voluntary decision that could completely be made by someone in a free market economy. 
I hope you'd agree. If the person who is rich and the other person both agree to this, then the one person can hire the other person and the second person could do this job for the first one who, I don't know, just doesn't want to do it or is too busy in his job doing it or whatever. He simply can afford to hire someone who do to do his uh, home economy for them. So let's take this to the next step. What if uh, technology were available that allowed uh, an automated computerized system to do this for you in your home? So uh, you could freely decide to have a system installed in your home that uh, monitors the contents of your fridge or wherever you keep your food um, and is also programmed with the things which you can do like on an app or something you can tell this system look uh, I want uh, every three days I want a fresh carton of milk and whatever you want uh, by the way I'm not advocating the uh, using and drinking of milk here but whatever you want to eat or drink uh, you can program it into this app and it, it sends out orders that order just in time everything you need the, so that your uh, your fridge and your storage are always filled with the things you want when you need them and just not too much and not too little and when you have a special wish that is not uh, in your regular uh, consumption schedule you can of course also send it to your little app and it will order this one too so you have this little uh, automated, computerized, half-intelligent uh, resource management system for your own home. That would also be something that you could do voluntarily if the technology were available, fully allowed within a free market economy or whatever kind of market economy even today's. So there should, ne should be no problem with uh, having such a system like that uh, in your free market um, philosophy, ideology, whatever, should be fully within the, well, you know, within the, the philosophy of the non-aggression principle and voluntarism and everything. Now, if thousands or mil millions of people could have such a system, they could also voluntarily decide to um, to connect their system to, uh, to a global resource management system if they wanted to. So that globally there, there could be an overview of how many uh, apples and cartons of uh, soy milk or whatever are used per day. Just so that everyone can look into that and see okay this is what we need uh, on that day and it, it just gives people an overview now one thing I, I forgot to mention is you can also program or you would be able in this in this uh, hypothetical scenario to program into your system things like only order fruits and vegetables that were pr produced locally or only order vegan food or whatever your personal preferences are, which could of course uh, be directed somehow towards sustainability and uh, non-violence against animals and all of those things. And that would also be allowed. So if your system was supposed to uh, buy, order apples for you, but it's just not the season for locally produced apples, then your system would uh, not order any apples at that point because you told your system behave sustainably basically order only locally produced apples then you could have your system tell you look uh, master uh, there are no locally produced uh, apples available at this time what would you like me to do then you could tell it um, don't order any or you could tell it well then screw it and order some apples from I don't know, Peru or halfway around the world for us Europeans. Um, you could also give it alternatives. You could say, okay, if no locally produced apples are available at some time, please 
or the bananas that are at least uh, produced under fair trade conditions or traded under fair trade conditions something like that just give your system rules that uh, say um, yeah, behave in sustainable ways behave in socially fair ways and all of that good stuff and yeah now I'm getting back to the other point uh, if many people decided to have such a system and they could link them them together voluntarily if they want to just because they realized that that would be something beneficial to everyone if there was this data uh, visible to everyone and visible to producers of certain goods like what is the current demand of apples uh, or any other product and that would still be something they could voluntarily do fully within uh, the, the philosophy of voluntarism and non-coercive um, interactions now what if uh, what if this system that I just described where people decide to link up and connect their individual home economies all over the world what if this grew into something that is truly global and where there are a sort of half intelligent automated uh, mechanisms at play that just help people all over the world that just uh, well help them allocate what is needed at what time in what area of the world and so on and that's when you are basically at a resource-based economy and you see I just took you there and every every little step that I described to you is just something that makes sense and something that people can do completely voluntarily and that is not a violation of any of your NAP or any of your physical freedom philosophies or ideals and that's basically what an RBE is it's there nowhere in this is there uh, the, the things you like to say like a central computer or some someone who forces or coerces people to do what what they don't want to do doesn't exist in an RBE it's people doing things voluntarily networking together all over the world to create the most efficient global economy that is possible it works best for themselves that wow interesting bug um, that allows them to behave sustainably because they choose to because they want to because they realize that it's in their own best self-interest to well to preserve this beautiful world that we live in and not to just uh, fuck it up and rob it of everything it has today just because we want these things today um, and when we take away this limitation of money of the whole market economy where uh, the decision for uh, a fair trade banana over a uh, not fair trade banana means that I have to pay 50 cent more and then I will probably decide not to buy the fair trade banana when we can remove that then it won't be a problem anymore to choose the fair trade banana which will not exist anymore <laughs> anyway then because there is no trade in that in that sense anymore in a resource-based economy but we can definitely choose the banana that was produced under the most socially fair and just and the most sustainable conditions possible to us at that given time and we won't we won't have uh, this market mechanism that makes everything that is better more expensive which always steers us towards choosing that which is worse in any thinkable way worse in product quality worse in in social fairness worse in environmental sustainability aspects in in any possible aspect so yeah that's why uh, 
coming back to the question of the actual debate that I was trying to review here, that's why resource-based economy is the social system that serves humankind best and definitely better than a market economy ever could. And yeah, once again I would like to express my, well, you can't call it disappointment because I actually expected even worse, but my unhappiness about how absolutely not uh, Victor addressed the actual topic in that debate. He just talked about non-aggression and about physical freedom and again I can only repeat please all free market advocates stop doing these little mind tricks that don't work anymore anyway where you try to make it look like the free market capitalism economy is the only possible result from the non-aggression principle, which it isn't. An RBE is fully non-aggressive, is fully non-coercive, is fully without physical, um, physical aggression and is completely uh, in accordance with physical freedom so maybe one or two of you out there can actually after having listened to this can actually manage to look at it in this way in the future RBE and market are both okay with your principles with your highest philosophical and ideological principles of non-aggression and physical freedom which I also hold, which every RBE advocate holds. So RBE is not a problem for your ideological principles. It is just, uh, just as much within uh, voluntarism as a free market is. So from this point, when you understand that, when you have understood okay, an RBE does not violate your principles, then maybe you can take that next step and look at okay, now which of the two actually works better for us, works better for everyone. And then maybe, I know I'm expecting and hoping a lot here, but maybe a few people out there can manage to get their brain into second gear and just start thinking about okay what is best for me what is best for everyone else in the long run and just understand that a free market isn't and just stop saying but a free market is the only thing that is voluntary and that is non-aggressive and where people have physical freedom it isn't I mean I'm repeating this over and over again because you get it wrong over and over again and I'm gonna keep repeating it until you get it right so an RBE has physical freedom for everyone an RBE is voluntary for everyone and when you understood that then look at which one of the two free market or RBE works best for everyone so that is your homework assignment um, send it in to me by Monday and with that I'll wish you a nice weekend enjoy the sun wherever it shines and enjoy the rain wherever it falls and I wish you all peace and a nice time of day whatever it is for you bye peace <laughs>